All right. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a side project I've been working on uh, involving around dorking. Most of you probably know what it is. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll do a quick introduction. I probably won't use my entire 30 or 40 minutes that I have. You'd be free to drink beer. Uh, my name is uh, Philip Rieslow. I'm uh, currently a security researcher at Recorder Future. I used to uh, be a software engineer in linguistics. Uh, and then I was a the much hyped data scientist role for a while. So I'll start off by introducing what dorking is, uh, looking at a few tools that exist today and the issues that I see with those. Then I'll show uh, dorky, which is the thing I built, and then I'll discuss some of the future sort of projects or ways this could develop that I would find cool. So dorking or search engine hacking is nothing new. It's been around for ages. Uh, it sort of took off in 2002 when Johnny Long uh, started collecting a little database of dorks, as they're called, these clever search terms. Uh, and we can see why it's, called, why it's called a dork from the original page, uh, Google dork, an inept or foolish person as revealed by Google. Uh, and this is what it looked like way back when. Uh, this has sort of morphed into this shiny looking thing, uh, exploit DB hosts the Google hacking database. And it's, it gets new search terms every few days, basically, and it's uh, related to, especially when a new vulnerability comes out, people want to find servers that are vulnerable. This is an example of a dork. Uh, so searching for Hamdita X shell backdoor in the title of the page brings up web shells uh, of a specific kind. And if we click through to these, we have uh, access to that server. So since this has been going on since 2002, uh, why, why bother doing this? I think there's a talk on this every few years. Um, it's still as relevant, if not more relevant. Uh, we got the Internet of Things, you know, toaster, DDoS, uh, webcams. Someone can sneak in and look at your parents walking around naked. Uh, everything is online. You get ICS, SCADA systems online. Uh, I'll show an example of this too. And then, again, nothing has really changed. It's still the same issues. People are publicly posting sites without having login uh, credentials or they use the default weak credentials. So it still, it still matters. So I was looking at trying to find a good example of this old dorking thing. Uh, Google search technique aided New York Dam hacker in Iran. Uh, and you could think, oh, that's, that's pretty cool or pretty bad. But then again, when we look at when this was published, it was a few months ago. Uh, so that's, that's a bit of a fail. So when most people think uh, dorking, they think uh, Google searching or like normal text search. Uh, I just wanted to bring this up just to highlight some of the issues with these things. Google has great advanced search operators. Um, most dorks that you find, especially on the Google hacking database, as is implied by the name, is are geared for Google. Bing filters a bunch of dorky results. You can't find SQL files, like searching for the file type extension. Uh, and has limited advanced operators. On the flip side, Bing has an API. Uh, Google has removed their search API. They only provide one that's called custom search engine. And you can sort of trick that into searching the whole web, but you get very limited results. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about what search engines I support here uh, later. Um, some of the existing tools. Uh, they all seem to be focused around single use. Uh, there's a lot of pretty UIs, uh, and most projects are dead. Uh, hopefully, this won't be one of those projects. Uh, you never know, but hopefully not. Uh, and what I wanted for, this is something I did at work, which I could later publish open source and free for everyone, uh, is because I wanted machine-readable results that I can set up alerts on. For example, I want to be alerted whenever a certain domain is has popped up in one of these dorks. That means that something is going on, for example, for a specific company. Uh, notable here is Search Diggity. They have a very nice website with a lot of good information, but the last updates I can see were from 2013. So I built this little thing called Dorky. Uh, this, I, it's, it's hard to read here, but um, 
It's basically a little management interface for uh, uh, keeping track of which dorks you want to run. Um, but it's split up into two different components. Uh, we have a runner that collects these dorks from a Mongo database and runs them and collects the results, waits a little bit, and then it does it all over again. Uh, and then we have the UI component that I showed a picture of just now. And in between those uh, two is the Mongo database that just stores the information, the dorks, the results. I built this using uh, Python. Uh, I like Python. I do it a lot for work. Uh, I use Mongo because it's, it's free, it's easy to set up, and if you want to do some rapid development, you don't have to specify a schema or anything, you just shove it in there. And Berksoig, which is a great little web application thing for Python, it's what powers Flask. Uh, if you haven't used it, you should really try it. Uh, included search engines, I, I included Google. Unfortunately, since they don't have an API, uh, you will need a thousand proxies, uh, but it works. Um, Bing, using their API, Google Custom Search, if you have something specific you wanna do, as well as Shodan. And if you haven't used Shodan, it's, it's basically like a searchable end map that runs across the web, and it, they collect screenshots and things from open RDP ports and things. It's very cool, you should check it out if you haven't. So the UI is very simple. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't wanna do something very cool. Uh, you put input a query, you input a description, you put it in a category, you give it a source, you found it somewhere, and then you pick what search engine you want it to run it from. And then it shows up here at this row. Uh, a little bit hard to see here. And as soon as you add it and you have this sort of runner component going, it will pick up that query next time it runs and it will execute it and collect the results. And looking at the results, this is just in the UI. Uh, you just get to see which, which IP and which port and sort of the header that came back. Uh, if you look in the database, it's the whole cached response from Shodan. Uh, and for, for example, for a Google search, it's the URL, the sort of title of the page, and then the little description that comes in your Google search result. So for uh, configuration, um, they, it talks through a Mongo database uh, that you need to set up. You need, uh, you select which uh, search engines that are active. Uh, you can input your API keys. Uh, for certain sites, aka Google, you need a proxy setup. Uh, and then you need some filtering because you don't get, you need to filter out because a lot of people repost these dorks on, for example, Blogspot or whatever and then uh, you'll get noise in your data. As I said, some of the issues here are results are not perfect. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of noise. Uh, there's rate limiting. You have to sort of pace yourself. And if you use the APIs, then there's API costs involved because if you run all the dorks from uh, the Google Hacking Database, then you'll run out of money pretty quickly if you're using Bing, for example. And one of the biggest issues and the big reason why I think a lot of these projects fail is because you need, when the APIs are updated or when the websites are changed, you need to update your approach. And I could tell that when Google turned off their search API, you could tell a ton of projects just collapsed and then never updated again. So some, some of the future things. Uh, I'd like to add more search engines. Uh, GitHub virus total hybrid analysis or some ideas. Um, some better logging and error handling. I have been a bit lazy, but I'm, <laughs> I'm working on improving it. Uh, and then adding a pipe to Elasticsearch I think would be cool if someone wants to set up their own alerts. Uh, the way I'm using this, I'm, I'm running this in our production system right now, uh, but I'm piping the results into our, our sort of platform and in there we have alerting capabilities and stuff like that, so I, uh, did not add the output to Elasticsearch myself. Uh, I figured I, I'll show you a little bit of a live demo. I'm not on the, on the Wi-Fi, so I won't give you the actual running the dorking, but I'll show you how the UI looks. Uh, if, you wanna, if you wanna check it out, it's at github.com slash recorderfuture slash dorky. It's MIT licensed. And if you have any questions, freesalu at gmail.com. 
I did not sign up for this peer list thing. I apologize. Yes, I think I have it running. Oh, there we go. So this is uh, Dorky running on my machine. I have, uh, it's not on GitHub yet, but I have a script that imports the entire Google Hacking database into your own local database, so it scrapes that website. Uh, it puts them in as not enabled to begin with because you don't want to lose all your money. Um, and in here we can sort of, if we wanted to enable this guy, we hit it, it's enabled, and it will start running the next time it's run. Uh, the query I showed from Shodan is in here. Uh, you run some query, SQ webcam, it gives you a bunch of webcam results, and you can look at the sort of ugly results in here. But it's a ton of webcams available. Uh, and I didn't intend to this to be a long talk. I wanted to keep it very brief because if you would like to try this out, please go on GitHub, uh, start running it. Uh, there's no reason for me to stand here and drone on for 30 minutes about something quite simple. Uh, that was it. If anyone has any questions or comments, please. Yes. Uh, I've, they are, I mean, that's, for, for me, it's been working out so far. I, it's, I have maybe, maybe a gigabyte or something in, the, in, the, in our production one, and it's, it's working fine. Yes? Uh, you said machine readable at the beginning, but it's not a command line tool. Is the, I, <laughs> you mentioned uh, machine readability towards the beginning, but it's not a command line tool. Is the idea that you have that people would no, enter? So yeah, so what, what I use this for is that I have a separate script that I run that pulls data from this Mongo database as soon as it's new, and then I sort of push that into wherever I want it. Um, is that Elasticsearch where you're pushing it into? No, I'm currently pushing it into, so what, I'm pushing it into Recorded Future, which you guys won't have the option to do unless you start working at Recorded Future. Uh, you can talk to me afterwards if you want to work at Recorded Future. Uh. Anybody else? No? Well, if not, then thank you. Quickest talk at B-Sides. What, what? <laughs> <laughs>